And that's, an, and that's a question everybody should ask. That's, that's the primary question that every human being should ask of himself. You know, who am I? Why am I here? And what is my future? The very basic questions that everyone must come to in their life if they expect to find uh, their destiny and the answers to the deepest mysteries of life itself. And as we begin to uh, unfold all of these things that took place in the heavens, and uh, how it impacted Earth, we come to a greater understanding of not only how great God is, but how great we are. You know, we're told in churches everywhere, oh, we're just a bunch of sinners, you know, and, and we're just saved by grace. And that, that's true, but God cares about us beyond what we can imagine because of who we are. And uh, he is very uh, mindful and uh, extending of himself in, in, in the, the angels that are concerned about our welfare and are trying to influence us to seek out God and know God. And so we are more than just sinners that are groping around here on earth. We're something far greater than we ever dreamed. And we're going to talk about that as we go forward. But we find here a story that took place in the Morning Star office and what happened as I continue the story is that when the spiritine of creation commenced under our father and the Ophanim creators, the Morning Star office was left unattended. And what took place was a decision made uh, by the Holy Commission of the seven spirits of God to allow Lucifer, a co-archangel under the, under the command of Gabriel, to have access and appointment to the Morning Star office, and that's why he's also called the Morning Star. He took over the office from our Father, uh, Yavael, uh, our Heavenly Father. And when he did, he uh, brought his certain mind referencing, which was a cherubimic mind circuitry coordinate, and he brought it to the office of the Morning Star. It would almost be like, say, a Supreme Court Justice trying to become a senator, or a senator trying to become a president. Uh, the mind circuitries of those offices aren't aligned with the uh, particular offices of the federal government. They all, uh, they all operate differently. So when the cherubim angel came from the cherubimic order of mind circuitry into the Morning Star office, he, he didn't, with his mind circuitry, properly align with the Ophanimic order. Now the Ophanim had a specific uh, function, and that was as creators. They had the creator codes to uh, know how to strum the sound or the Word of God in such a way that they could create life forms. Now the cherubim, they were particularly aligned with uh, guardianship, and so they didn't have the same coordinates. So uh, there was a problem in synchronization and alignment with the, the different mind circuitries of each particular group. But it was at that time, uh, in the anteriority of the yams, or the days, that Lucifer, with this desire to ascend, which was, was an okay desire, but that the methodology he was about to employ was contrary to what is ordained in the universal order. So what he did was uh, kind of like, and the only way I can really help uh, you see is from what takes place on earth, and that was he used his office like so many CEOs and corporations or people in authority do when they have a position of authority. They do something uh, in corrupt. And what he did was he mined and hacked into the creator codes of the Ophanim Lords. And he st actually stole the software, uh, so to speak, metaphorically speaking, of the Ophanim, or the creators. And it was at that point that uh, the trouble began, when he began to get these creator codes and start creating with a twisted nature. With the creator gifting, the creators being the Ophanim and their talent to create, now stolen in the hand of Lucifer, he used that very talent to seduce the Ophanim to follow him. Of course, that was uh, irrespective of the 144,000 that were creating with the, the Heavenly Father life forms and spiriting life forms in this solar system. These Ophanim under the command of Lucifer in the Morning Star office followed him. And as a result of that, the coordinates for creating, which was signaled by those Ophanim under the lordship of uh, Lucifer, were transmitted to the Ophanim that were spiriting creation. And the result of that twistedness 
cause there to be a kind of a photo translation because remember these things are done in pictographic forms photo translation of twisted life forms on the earth this wasn't first detected by the uh, the creator's spiriting life forms and what happened was uh, was the the manifestation of uh, behemoths on the earth as mentioned in uh, the fifth yom of genesis and those be those behemoths uh, included not only what we normally call uh, elephants and giant animals it also uh, incorporated uh, the dinosaurs so dinosaurs which we have tremendous fossil remains of all over the world were actually uh, twisted creation signals that manifested in this world that were demonic or satanic and uh, when that was seen by the creators that were spiriting life here that 144,000 went to war against their brother Ophanim under the lordship of Lucifer and that's how the uh, the wars in heaven began that's that's where they were sourced in and uh, of course the 144,000 did not have the authority to launch into the battle with the other Ophanim that had to be sanctioned by the Holy Commission because remember there are wars in heaven but if they're not sanctioned by the Holy Commission the seven spirits of God then they're outside of the purview of that court they're wrong but nonetheless that war ensued and that's when Michael the archangel over the seraphim was called in to stop the war and at that point Lucifer abdicated his battle plan and that's when the Holy Commission sat to determine what would happen as a result of this war that was commenced in heaven when the Holy Commission sat to make the determination upon an archangel Lucifer who was a, remember he was a co-archangel with with Gabriel over the cherubim and now in the morning star office which was the office of the Heavenly Father over all the angels including the Ophanim creators it was determined that he would have to abandon his heavenly body and remember we read about what that body was like it was incredible beauty and he had great musical talent there was none uh, so finely crafted as Lucifer but his judgment was to take on a physical body along with the uh, third of the angels of this galaxy which were the Ophanim and it also included uh, the 144,000 because even though you can have uh, empathy for their loyalty to the father in going to war against their brothers it was still outside of their authority to do that and so they were thrown into that judgment as well so the Ophanim and Lucifer were uh, commanded to go into flesh or into physical creations and Lucifer uh, refused. He, he refused to uh, abandon his uh, angel body. And so he had to take on a dismembered reality, which now is uh, in demonic form. Satan is a demonic power. And all of the angels with him that refused to, uh, to take on physical forms also had that same fate. So the Ophanim under the command of Lucifer have become the demons and the powers of the air in this world and that that's their judgment but there also is a um, an appeal that's been made because Lucifer does not accept the judgment and so there's an appeal going on that hasn't been decided on yet and uh, we'll talk more about that appeal process and we'll talk more about uh, what that means to human beings but now I want to talk about a portion of the Ophanim that uh, accepted the judgment 